Well, thank you so much for joining us or for staying with us. You know, brain health, that's what we're talking about next. You know, everybody knows that life places incredible demands on, on the brain. Age, changes in the brain structure, function, this all threaten various degrees of cognitive impairments. Now, to minimize the risk, scientists point individuals to a range of lifestyle factors associated with long-term brain health and mental function. Many of those proactive steps uh, for supporting brain health are behaviors that they have long advised for other reasons. Regular workout, balanced diet, mental and social stimulation, on and on and on like that. What do we need to promote brain health? And what's the Gabby Williams Alzheimer's Foundation? What's their part in all of this? Let's have this conversation this morning with uh, ladies first, Miss Olato Gabby Williams, a trustee of the Gabby Williams Alzheimer's Foundation. She's a child welfare advocate and book industry journalist. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. We also have with us uh, Mr. Peter Alanio, who is a senior officer at Gabby Williams Alzheimer's Foundation. Thank you. Good Sorry. morning to you. Thank you. Dr. Oziegbe Ogide is here as well. He's a consultant, family physician with special interest in geriatric medicine, among several others, and he works as the head of triage accident and emergency of the Lagos State University Teaching Lagos University Teaching Hospital. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much and thank you, Viat. You know, for those who don't know what we're talking about here, when we talk about brain health, first of all, let me even ask you, Dr. Ogide, do you think people even give any, give much thinking to their brain? They just keep going. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, to start with, uh, I would say that um, most persons do not really give um, priority to their brain, especially the health of their brains, just like the way they take care of other parts of their body. They just believe they are on the auto uh, mobile, just moving, you know, without taking special care of their brain. The brain doesn't ask, it doesn't fall sick now, does it? <laughs> exactly. So that's, <laughs> that's where the problem is. It's just like even the heart itself. Mm. Some persons just feel, oh, the body is working, the heart yeah. is beating, so you don't really care. But at the end of the day, these are key organs of the body that if any problem comes from those areas, the effect is really devastating. So mm. brain health is very important, just as even the cardiovascular health as well. Yeah, but um, to speaking to how, how are people vulnerable? Now, one of the, in, as I introduced the program, I talked about one of the demands is that of age. Yeah. What's that got to do with the brain? Just okay. context. So, so generally, um, age uh, plays a key role uh, in a lot of conditions. Okay, just as we grow, the brain also grow. Just as we change, the brain also experiences some form of changes. And that's what uh, is bringing us here today, talking about the brain health. There are some very common conditions like dementia and Alzheimer's itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as the brain ages, changes begin to occur in the brain. For example, the brain has uh, a part known as the white matter and the gray matter. Normally, from childhood, adolescence, the ratio between the white and the gray matter is just about 1 to 13. But as the person ages, the brain shrinks mm. and that ratio reduces. And because of that, other aspects and function of the brain and the body is also affected as well. Mm. So it's very important to really take care of the brain. Okay. Um, you, you mentioned Alzheimer's now. So let me, let me go to Mr. Mr. Lanio. One of the, maybe just by way of introduction, when we talk about Alzheimer's, what are we talking about? Um, thank you so much. Alzheimer's is a neurodegenerative uh, disease. It's one of the neurodegenerative diseases. And uh, generally, it affects uh, the brain. But 
that not the complete part of the brain is being affected, but a specific segment that has to do with impairment of um, functions and activities as the person ages. Generally speaking, um, people above 65 years of age are more likely disposable to develop Alzheimer's disease. But in recent time, we have seen um, early onset and early cases of Alzheimer's disease in younger person. So Alzheimer's disease is one of uh, the family of dementia, and there are a few other ones that can also uh, fall along the, the line of Alzheimer's disease. And, uh, but uh, generally speaking, the dementia itself is the family name, while Alzheimer's disease is just one of the family name of uh, the compounds of uh, dementia. But you know, the, the interesting thing about that is, I mean, we talk about the age, as the, someone ages, they become more vulnerable to this. That's what you're saying. That's right. Is, it, is the condition avoidable? Yes. Um, the condition, uh, Alzheimer's disease is not a normal part of aging. It is not expected. Okay. But if people don't take proper care of their brain health, which is part of the advocacy we are running, there is tendency that they will be predisposed to that ailment at the later part of their, of their life. So early and preventive approach becomes a vital tool in encouraging people to live a safe life and to also disease from sedentary lifestyle that can predispose them to factors that can hinder their brain health, uh, making them uh, vulnerable to Alzheimer's disease. Well, uh, let me ask you, uh, Madam, I started by asking Dr. Vide about whether or not people are conscious of how they jeopardize their brains. What's your own layman's thoughts on that? Can I just say something very just, um, that we, we, we didn't sort of nail what Alzheimer's does to a person and the loss of, the gradual loss of thinking skills, memory loss, um, you know, you, you just, you, the, the brain is a command room, yes, and it tells the rest of the body what to do. Mm. And um, that starts to degenerate, so you, the commands to the body, <laughs> oh, Ziegbe, are you listening? And so you can come in here. And so you, 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 became, you become less and less able to do, carry out the normal routine functions of life mm. so you, you, you um, my father the, 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 the Gabby Williams Alzheimer's Foundation was inaugurated to honor his life and his works he was a public health pioneer very fit very able intellectually brilliant very sporty and um, and when he was diagnosed out with Alzheimer's you know it was a time of great darkness ignorance in in, in our country and um, my mother literally had to learn from re re just online resources about Alzheimer's, what this condition her husband was, uh, was suffering from. And um, we saw him go through the seven stages of Alzheimer's. Um, and, um, you know, just watch the degeneration occur and it was heart-wrenching. And by the end, when we inaugurated, um, the year before he passed, when we inaugurated the, the foundation, it was a you know controversial decision whether or not to bring him to the birthday party. It was inaugurated on the 11th of September, which was his 80th birthday. And my mother said, "Tom, it's important to to demystify um, Alzheimer's. We want people to see the ravages, how it ravages the body, and um, and you know we want them to see the man. This was a, a gathering of people who've known my father for decades, decades." see what has become of Gabby, your father, my husband. Um, um, and, 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 and it's nothing to do with witchcraft, it's nothing to do with sinfulness, it is a disease of the brain. And um, it is a degenerative disease, and that leads to this kind of um, immobility. Um, he couldn't, by the end, he couldn't feed himself, he couldn't even chew, he'd forget his food in his mouth. He, he was really almost like, is it almost vegetative? Is that the word? Um, Ozir, you're the medical doctor. The, 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 um, yes. Um, so, but we've been told that if you exercise, if you sleep well, if you eat well, if you keep your brain very active, lots of activities, it can 
Ozigo, I keep on looking at you even more than I'm looking at Ayo. It can help to mitigate. It can help to um, mitigate the risk. Yeah, yes? but, but the, the question I'm asking you, madam, is are, we, are people even aware? I mean, you, you said something now, I mean, that uh, mom literally had to um, grope for information to yeah. take care of her husband. I'm, I'm just asking, many people are watching us right now, and they. Do you think they are aware of that risk? I'm, I'm, I asked him as a medical professional, mm. but I'm asking you as someone who is just like me. Mm. You know, do you think how can maybe I should how, how should people? What are the consciousness that people need to get to about brain health? Yeah. Speaking as a lay person, I'm from what yeah. you know. Yeah, you know, the reason why we started the Gabby Williams Alzheimer's Foundation was to create awareness. So we, mm. we develop IEC materials, information education, communication materials, um, which we distribute at all our events. Uh, we we um, make friends with the media. I mean, channels where, you know, we have a relationship with channels. We have a relationship with print media. And um, we have, we invite them to many of our events, um, Q&A sessions with experts like um, Ozigwe. Um, and we have a whole faculty of experts, mm. public health experts, you know, um, all sorts of fa uh, family health, nutritionists, all sorts of um, dimensions, all sorts of aspects of um, medicine that play into the care of someone diagnosed with Alzheimer's and also play into the preventative approaches that impact on the preventative approaches. Um, I don't think it is completely preventable, but it, you can miti mitigate the risk. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, yesterday for we started, we, we um, premiered our 2D animation. It's the second in our series of animated stories around um, Alzheimer's specifically or brain health. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was the premiere of Remembering Tomorrow, which promotes the meds lifestyle. Okay. You yes. know, uh, the, the one of the things that bothers me, let me, let me come back to you. Um, Sorry, can I just add okay. something? Precisely, the level of awareness is very low. Okay. Uh, most of our um, activities on the field, we have uh, a, an instrument for a questionnaire we've already designed. And from the questionnaire, we, when we that, administer... That's prevention of the big uh, awareness, awareness yes. about brain health. About brain generally. health, yes, about brain health. Um, so the, we take it for granted a lot. We take it for yes, granted yes, a lot. Yes, yes. About 75 to 79 percent of people uh, tend not to be aware about brain health. Neither brain health nor... Alzheimer's disease because we have that instrument anytime we go to the field we apply that uh, now, is it and we notice that people are not aware okay. and so that is why we intensify our advocacy. So Dr. Obisu, is it because um, what, what is responsible for that level of awareness, the, the low level of awareness of brain health? Is it because of poverty? Is it because of our environment? Is it because of our level of development? What exactly do you think this? Okay, for my personal opinion I think it's multifactorial Generally, most persons don't even take care of their health. If you do a quick survey, if I have opportunity of um, you know, talking in a gathering, I just ask a very simple question. When was the last time you checked your blood pressure? You'll be shocked that some persons have not checked their blood pressure for like a year. Not to talk about brain health. or Especially just people above 40. Yeah, especially those above 40. So don't talk of just uh, talking about brain health. They've not even sorted out the, you know, the most common things that can lead to mortality. Uh, no, then talking about uh, brain health itself. So generally, I think there's this lackluster um, approach towards health. Of course, like I said, it's multifactorial. Poverty can come in, ignorance can come in, and some persons don't just care about their health. So those are some of the so, things. Like, well, you know, in terms of uh, prevention now uh, of um, the degenerative, that's what you call degenerative, yeah, degenerative disorders. Disease, yeah. What are the things that people need to begin to pay attention to? Okay, so um, like we said, Alzheimer is a degenerative, progressive degenerative condition. So meaning that once it starts, it just continues Can till. Can be prevented? Yes, so the thing now is um, there are some risk factors for it. Some of these risk factors are modifiable, while some are not modifiable. For example, the age. Once an individual gets to the age of 65 and above, you cannot modify your age. There are changes that occur. Like I said earlier, the brain starts to shrink. There are some proteins that are uh, involved in the pathology of uh, Alzheimer's disease. There are the tau protein and the amyloid protein. When the brain shrinks, those proteins, they clog together 
and as a result, the Alzheimer's sequelae begin to uh, come up. So some of these things cannot be uh, modified. However, there are some uh, cannot be modified. There are some no, uh, modifiable factors. For example, smoking, alcohol uh, intake, uh, elevated so lifestyle, blood, less lifestyle modification can just help reduce the incidence. But most time, there's also genetic factors which are not modifiable. For example, uh, an individual, maybe the mother, the father, there's already that uh, risk factor there. Then going further, there are some medication that can help to uh, decrease the progression of the disease. But just to mention, it's like a bad news, uh, Alzheimer's disease is not really curable, okay? But the, the uh, outcome can be extended. You know, we, the major issue in Alzheimer's disease is cognitive uh, function, deranged cognitive function, okay? From mild, moderate, and severe which now leads to affectation of uh, the activity of daily living of the individual from the basic activity of daily living to the instrumental activity of daily living. So what can be done is just to reduce the progression. For someone to move from mild to severe, let's say for about five years, with those medication and some other uh, cognitive uh, uh, behavioral therapy and other uh, medications, and maybe probably extend it to about 15 years or thereabout, but it's a progressive uh, condition. You know, do, you know uh, Mr. Uh, Olanio, you, you talked about the fact that the, the level of awareness is low. Um, at what point in life should anyone begin to pay attention? Um, we have uh, a component of our um, intervention that we call um, old school hip hop. The concept of the old school hip hop is to create awareness as early as possible in the life of an individual. We go to secondary schools and uh, primary schools to talk to young people about their brain health. So you think so there is no particular age that can be too early. Okay. As early as possible, we need to begin to take proactive measures towards achieving the best of brain now, health. Is that something that needs to come into an education curriculum or? It is very uh, paramount that we set it in as part of the education curriculum. Mm. Uh, we go as far as uh, going to um, um, state agencies to get approval to, fa to have access to those schools. Because what we notice is that the younger people could be a catalyst of change within themselves and even outside themselves by okay. having influence on the older generations. Mm. You know, Madam, um, you are a child welfare advocate mm. as well, so um, you would understand the risks they run from early in life, right? So what needs to be done in terms of this education? And he talked about the level of awareness. I mean, mm -hmm. talking about degenerative brain health to a 16-year-old can be very scary, <laughs> don't you think? Yeah. Our film is for all ages. Our films, we have Waiting to Do Mama Dupe in Pigeon English, and also, I think, Remembering Tomorrow is Standard English. Yes. It's sort of a mixture of Standard English, it's sort of Niger English, and um, they're perfect for all ages. And so a screening of each of these gives them the basic principles they need. Waiting to Do Mama Dupe ends with a bullet list of how to recognize the signs of Alzheimer's, and then you contact the doctor. Um, uh, and remembering tomorrow is a, um, lessons at Obalinde Buka mm. with Toi and what's her friend's name? The, the, I can't remember the daily or Femi, <laughs> her friend's name. And they're talking about a lecture from a doctor who introduced the meds lifestyle, which is managing stress, eating well, um, the sleep, diet. and diet. Yeah. Yes, it's diet. So meds, sleep, stress, diet, exercise, exercise. is the E. And so they, these are very, very, very easy to digest principles that, that you, can, you can introduce to very young people um, very early. And through the medium of audiovisual and 2D animation, it's perfect. So we're trying to make these user-friendly resources. And we also have this, as I said, the IEC materials. And one of the IEC materials, the, the original IEC material produced by the foundation, included a case study of a, a tragic story um, 
um, which my mother actually re um, relays to the people, the press and the people present at the premiere yesterday, of a school principal, retired school principal, who tragically lost, I think, quite a few number of her children. And the trauma led to a d dementia, was it Alzheimer's, we don't know. And um, she was wandering around the, the town like a mad woman and, um, and, and the people around didn't know what to make of her condition and they started asking her questions and she started confessing to killing her children because of course she didn't. Mm. You know, it was all part of the tra traumatized so, condition and they stoned her to death. Mm. And, um, so essentially you're saying that even trauma could trigger yeah. Alzheimer's? Yeah, yeah. those are risk factors. So, <laughs> gosh, there are some things we can do something with there are some things we can't do anything yes. about now you i understand that there is a website that people can get some of these materials yes oh yes um gabby williams alzheimer's foundation dot org o r g okay. yeah gabby williams alzheimer's foundation dot o r g okay. gabby's g a b okay, that's the website it should be yes yes okay. that's the website fantastic it's on screen so all of the uh, information everything you need is there including it's the the videos that you talked about it's waiting to do my mind to there is there yes it's on okay. there but the remember tomorrow is premiered yesterday okay. so it will be there probably by Monday or Tuesday. Okay. Remembering tomorrow, lesson at on a Balende Booker. Mm. Um, they are a lot of fun, our, our, <laughs> All right. our animation. So just to be clear, the, the, the website is um, Gabby Williams. Alzheimer's Foundation. Alzheimer's Foundation. Dot org. Dot org. Yeah. Now, if you hear some kind of t sound in our voice, it's not spelt in Alzheimer's, just so you know, I'm just putting up that, <laughs> forgive me. I want to thank you very much, um, ladies and gentlemen, for being here today. Um, you have triggered some people's slumbering brains to some <laughs> risks that they, are, they, are, they have put themselves already with or without their consciousness. Ms. Olato Gabby Williams, trustee of the Gabby Williams Alzheimer's Foundation and Child Welfare Advocate, thank you so much for your time My pleasure. today. Thank you. Mr. Peter Alani, our senior officer, Gabby Williams Alzheimer's Foundation, thank you. Thank you for having me. As well as Dr. Ozigbe Ogire, a consultant, family physician, and uh, head of triage, accident, and emergency, Lagos University Teaching Hospital. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. All right. You also heard one of the medications against, at least to manage Alzheimer's, is exercise. And that's what we are talking about next. Do stay with us.